And I now call the Minister for the Economy, Gordon Lance, and the Minister will have up to, up to 20 minutes to respond. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to respond to this private member's bill, and I value the interest shown by the House in this important and current issue. I note with interest the member's desire to prohibit onshore hydraulic fracturing. However, this is only one element within the much broader and complex policy area of petroleum licensing. As members debate this bill today, I would ask that they reflect on the steps taken and the progress made by my department in formulating policy proposals on the future of all onshore petroleum activities in Northern Ireland. Recognising the changing strategic policy context in relation to energy supply, carbon emissions and climate change, my department has recently undertaken a review of our current petroleum licensing regime. An important step in that review was the completion of independent Northern Ireland specific research on the economic, environmental and social impacts of petroleum exploration and development activity. My officials have fully considered the research findings along with other international studies and I can confirm that my department's policy review has now concluded. I have also considered this complex policy area carefully and given due consideration to the expert advice received. As this is a cross-cutting and controversial policy area, on the 31st of January, I circulated a paper to executive colleagues outlining the position, not just on fracking, but on all onshore petroleum licensing activity. My paper recommended the executive agree a preferred policy option of a moratorium on all forms of exploration and extraction of oil and gas to be followed by the introduction of a legislative ban. This would not only bring Northern Ireland in line with the rest of the United Kingdom on the issue of fracking, but go further by legislating for all other types of petroleum exploration or extraction. The position of my party is therefore clear, both now and in any future executive. And of course, my proposed way forward will now require the agreement of a future executive, following which the preferred option will be subject to a public consultation. I think it is important, therefore, for members to consider the bill before them in the context of these developments, as well as understanding the context of petroleum licensing in Northern Ireland, presuming, of course, that the other parties on the executive share my view. Because to date, only the Finance Minister responded to my paper. The Ministers from the SDLP, the Alliance and the UUP have not. And the question for those other parties to answer is why they did not uh, respond. But it may be useful to provide some general context for this evening's debate. Onshore exploration for petroleum in Northern Ireland has been taking place on a small scale since the Petroleum Production Act Northern Ireland was introduced in 1964. Over that time, although small amounts of oil and gas have been found, no commercial extraction has ever taken place. Companies explore for and seek to extract both conventional hydrocarbons and unconventional hydrocarbons. Conventional hydrocarbons are found within porous rocks and are easily accessed by vertical wells and standard production techniques. Unconventional hydrocarbons, in contrast, are found in less porous rocks, such as shale, and are less easy to access. This is when techniques such as long horizontal drilling combined with high volume hydro hydraulic fracturing are used. Now, this bill is focused solely on one testing and production technique, the use of fracking to access hydrocarbons in shale. There are currently no petroleum licences in Northern Ireland. The last active licence was relinquished on the 28th of April 2020. Members will also be aware that my department is currently considering two petroleum licences applications. Both applications were subject to a public consultation process, which closed in July 2019. My department received in excess of 5,700 responses, which were published at the end of October 2019. PLA 1-16, made by EHA Exploration Limited, proposes exploring for oil and gas in the porous sandstones in the area to the south and east of Loch Ness, using conventional drilling techniques. PLA 2-16, made by Tamborne Resources UK Limited, proposes exploring for gas in County Fermanagh. 
Initially, this application had sought approval for the use of high-volume hydraulic fracturing. However, Tamborum subsequently made a request to revise its application in March 2020. This proposed revision will remove the need for fracking. In summary, therefore, across Northern Ireland at this point in time, we have no petroleum licences in place, and neither of the two existing applications currently propose the application of high-volume hydraulic fracturing. I have repeatedly stated that decisions on both, li on both license applications will be made by an, exec by an executive as a whole, following agreement of Northern Ireland's future petroleum licensing policy informed by my department's policy review. I reiterate this commitment today and sincerely hope that those responsible for misinformation on social media are listening. Now, the number and range of concerns raised in the responses to my department's consultations on the two applications brought into sharp focus the urgent need to review and update Northern Ireland's petroleum licensing policy. On this basis, my officials commenced a review in late 2019 in accordance with the Executive's Policy Development Toolkit of Northern Ireland's current onshore petroleum licensing system. The aim was to establish a robust evidence base from which to develop policy options for any future licensing regime. Initial considerations highlighted the lack of Northern Ireland-specific information on the impacts of petroleum licensing and the need for independent research. In October 2020, therefore, my department commissioned Hatch Regenerous to undertake independent research into the economic, societal and environmental impacts of onshore petroleum exploration and production in Northern Ireland. In addition to analysing up-to-date peer-reviewed research and considering the policy context in Northern Ireland, as well as further afield, Hatch engaged extensively with stakeholders, including government, councils, industry, environmental organisations and community groups. The final Hatch report was delivered to my department in July last year, and my officials have given careful consideration to its findings, as well as other relevant international studies, in order to develop a range of evidence-based policy options. That report was ex uh, circulated to my executive colleagues, but I am now prepared to publish it so that all interested parties can read it. As I have already set out, my January paper to executive colleagues presented the outputs of the research and the options for the future of not just fracking, but all petroleum licensing in Northern Ireland. My paper also recommended a preferred option to introduce a moratorium and eventual legislative ban on all forms of onshore petroleum exploration and production. Now, this was based on a number of factors. Firstly, a moratorium and ban on all forms of onshore petroleum exploration and production would not disadvantage the local economy. As I have already said, in the last 50 years, there has been no commercial production of oil or gas in Northern Ireland, hence there is no reliance on the sector. Specifically, the Hatch research concludes that the potential positive economic impacts of petroleum exploration and production would be relatively minor. The preferred option would therefore ensure a focus on the growth of the low carbon and renewable energy sector, a secure indigenous resource supporting people into secure, well-paid jobs. Secondly, a moratorium and ban on all forms of onshore petroleum exploration and production removes the possibility of potential adverse societal and environmental impacts on local communities and the rural environment, as no further exploration or development would be permitted. Now I want to turn to the specifics of the proposed bill. From the outset, I would like to note my disappointment and surprise that at no point has the member sought to engage with my officials or me on what is being proposed in this cross-cutting, controversial and complex area. I think it would have been useful for both of us if she had. It is also unclear what level of consultation has taken place with those who may be impacted by the Bill's passage. I note that there is limited detail in the explanatory and financial memorandum 
on the extent of engagement during the member's eight-week consultation period. The bill itself is very limited in dealing with just one of a number of potential oil and gas extraction techniques, hydraulic fracturing. As I have set out earlier, this technique is used to extract hydrocarbons from non-porous shale rocks. In Northern Ireland, such rocks are largely located in the Fermanagh area. Enactment of this bill, however, would not address future petroleum exploration or production activities by any other means in Fermanagh or in other areas of Northern Ireland. Perhaps that is the Sinn Féin position, but it is not mine. The bill also includes a limited definition of hydraulic fracturing. Unlike the definition in the Petroleum Act 1998, which covers the rest of the United Kingdom, it does not define high-volume hydraulic fracturing in terms of the large volumes of water used. Other types of fracturing with much lower volumes of water are used for purposes other than extracting shale gas. For example, as I said earlier, water bowl holes may be fractured to increase their yield. This type of fracturing is different to the process involved in shale gas exploration and production. The bill, therefore, needs careful scrutiny to ensure it does not have unintended consequences. The definition may require amendment to specify the volumes of water used and so clarify the types of fracking that would fall within the remit of the bill. I also note that the bill attempts to have retrospective effect in the proposed new section 2A2C to be inserted into the Petroleum Production Act NI 1964. The explanatory and financial memorandum does not provide any assessment of the legal or financial implications of such retrospective action. I think this also requires careful consideration, which is why I repeatedly feel the need to remind the House that legislation requires sober and careful consideration, not often possible when such major policy areas are addressed by private members' bills. I will. Right. There have been a number of this had come up with the moratorium as well, discussion in the debate on the motion and by a few members this evening about the potential legal costs and judicial action. Can the Minister confirm if his department has had any indication that there would be any legal challenge if this bill or any moratorium or subsequent legislation came in on banning of fracking in Northern Ireland? Well that's why um, I've sa I said previously I think I think perhaps even in, in written answers uh, to uh, the member, that where there um, have been um, applications outstanding or the potential for that to, uh, to be currently happening, um, we would bring in our policy. Uh, we would get that put through in the proper way with consultation um, and then make sure the legislation is in place and ultimately then on those other applications it would be for the executive. Um, uh, to decide, and that's always, that, that was always going to be the case. I think it's a little bit disingenuous as well for some members uh, this evening to say um, that this threat of, of fracking has always uh, existed um, and it would have been solely at the whim of a, uh, of a DUP minister. Of course, that's not the case because I've always made it clear that on these applications and on licensing applications, because they are controversial, cross-cutting and significant, that I would always have referred them um, to the uh, executive. Uh, yeah. On that point, Minister, I, I appreciate the, 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 the legal requirements on a minister and the department uh, to deal with applications, licensing applications when they come in. But the reality is, if Northern Ireland moved to the point that you're suggesting tonight that you're willing to move to, which is not only will there be a moratorium, that would still allow license applications to come along because those people might think they could still persuade change. But ultimately, you've indicated that you're willing to legislate, which would ultimately end all exploration. In those circumstances, do you not agree with me that we need to get to that point quickly to ensure and send out a very clear signal there is no longer in Northern Ireland any point in making a license application? Well, look, I certainly understand the, the member wanting to have ensured that this came to the floor of the Assembly as soon as possible for, for legislation. I hope he will understand um, that I wanted to um, carefully consider. And it was a, it's a significant report, and I'm sure when I release this in, in, in the coming uh, days, um, that he will take a lot of time to, to look at as well. I think it's only right that as a department uh, that we take the time to uh, consider that. Um, 
there was a lot of work going on in terms of the energy strategy and other issues within um, that part of um, the department. I sought to bring this as quickly as I could. I sought um, agreement and um, I think certainly we can recognise that we're in the position tonight where um, there is a unity around this issue and I think we have a solid basis now for making that um, decision based on the independent research um, that my department has commissioned and the other international studies um, uh, that, 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 that we looked at. So just for absolute clarity then, is the Minister saying, I'm making it very clear this evening, that uh, licences that are currently being sought, the reality is your day is up? Well, the, the reality is that any licences will require cross-community uh, support uh, in the executive. I think it's fairly clear that that is not something that will happen anytime soon for, for a number of uh, reasons. Uh, and secondly, I think the, the policy that we have here uh, in front of us um, uh, this, this evening, as I have set out, is one that commands support uh, across uh, the executive. This shouldn't come as a surprise. I made it clear at the Economy Committee, as the uh, chair set out uh, a few moments ago that last week, uh, or the week before, um, I think it was I made clear um, I, I hope what my position was, was on it whenever I said that I didn't, didn't believe that there would be any um, issue at the executive getting agreement for what I was um, bring, bringing forward. So uh, I recognise that petroleum exploration uh, and hydraulic fracturing in particular uh, is an emotive subject and for that reason I recognise that despite this bill's narrow scope and shortcomings, uh, members may feel um, that they will have to support it in the chamber today. Uh, I would just warn that this is a complex policy area which cannot and should not be addressed on a piecemeal basis. Uh, for that reason, I am still of the view that the appropriate way forward remains the implementation of my recommended option, which has been informed by expert advice from independent research and will be subject uh, to full public scrutiny through a consultation process and subject to a future executive agreement and public consultation. Uh, the introduction of a moratorium and implementation of a legislative ban in the next mandate will address all types of petroleum exploration and production for all of uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, I believe that my preferred approach is more comprehensive and I believe it would be welcomed uh, by those so concerned uh, about uh, this issue. I don't want to rehearse uh, what everybody has said uh, during this debate, but I do want to touch uh, upon uh, a couple of issues. And, um, the first is around some of the comments that have been made in relation to the energy strategy. Um, some have said that the energy strategy does not go far enough. Um, I believe that it is appropriate for Northern Ireland. I think it's right. Uh, I think the fact that it was endorsed unanimously at the executive and the fact that so many stakeholders, um, both in the renewable sector, in the business sector, um, and others have said that this is the strategy uh, that we need. Um, comments have also been made in relation to, to blue hydrogen, um, but certainly my focus is um, on green hydrogen, and I think that's where we have incredible potential in Northern Ireland because of the wind resource that we have, and I want to harness that. And I think that green, green hydrogen is the way in which we can uh, uh, do that. And uh, I know that there has been some uh, uh, scaremongering uh, out there and, quite frankly, nonsense spouted by some who say um, that it is a pro-fossil fuel energy strategy. That is certainly uh, not the case. You can very clearly see the direction of, of travel that we are, are headed in. Um, but I do just want to touch on some of the comments that have uh, been made uh, because I don't want to be hypocritical uh, as I stand here uh, this evening and I don't want to say um, that, there, that this is going to be a, a, a win in terms of, of, of climate change um, because it certainly is the case that we are going to have to continue for some time to depend on fossil fuels and I think that we're being dishonest with the public and dishonest with ourselves. Uh, if we say that there isn't going to be any need for fossil fuels for us in the short uh, term, uh, as of uh, 15 minutes ago, in terms of our own electricity, 45% uh, of that was generated uh, from, from fossil fuels. And so we have to, to be honest and recognise that fossil fuels will continue to play a necessary uh, approach um, as part of our uh, fuel su supply. But make, let me make it clear. I want us to head as quickly as we can uh, towards renewables. I think it was the chair, in fact, it was the chair uh, of the committee that said fossil fuels should remain in the ground. If that is the case, we're going to find ourselves in trouble very, very soon. But I based my decision today 
uh, on the economic and societal impacts uh, that hydraulic uh, fracking and uh, petroleum licensing may have in Northern Ireland. Uh, I understand we're still going to need fossil fuels. We will still be dependent uh, on them for a time uh, to come. Uh, however, we're being dishonest um, with ourselves if we say uh, otherwise, up, but the transition is, is very, very uh, clear. So, in conclusion, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I thank members for their contributions and I remain committed to working with stakeholders in this policy area. Thank you. I thank the Minister for that uh, contribution and that um, response.